and then so then you know I, I'm working with Jeff and so Jeff's paying me fifteen hundred a show. Uh, so that's way more money, and he did it because he loved me, and uh, he knew I needed it, you know. So he fucking great guy, and uh, so I'm, now I can fund the company down there, and uh, so I go out with him, and then I fly back on uh, Sunday, and uh, you know, go back and uh, live a life I love, which was down in uh, Mexico. Mexico. Like a doctor. Yeah. Nobody bothers you. Yeah, no, uh, Nobody, no. I can't. I always wanted to live in Mexico. Like where La Bamba went for the tattoo. And yeah, woke right. Up that morning and, Fuck, and the yeah. fucking teepee. I lost my virginity to, to a prostitute in Tijuana when I was 18 years old in the Navy. Damn. She was uh, overweight and her uh, teeth had no general direction or color, but she was well within my budget. <laughs> Is that why you got kicked out of the Navy? Oh, no. Because <laughs> no. you, you said that, and I, I just never heard that before, that you were bad at the Navy. I've never heard like I don't like I think I'd be bad at the Navy, but really, for different reasons. Really bad at the Navy. Uh, I, uh, you know, I just had this. Uh, <clears throat> I had this thing with drugs. Uh, you know, from the, you know, I, I grew up in uh, from a little bitty town, but I grew up in Houston, so we had uh, plenty of, uh, you know, <laughs> just you know, hate Ashbury was going on and. But Alan's Landing was going on, in, or I hate Asperger's in uh, Fr Fr Frisco, but uh, right. and then Alan's Landing in Houston was going on, and which was a huge hippie scene in Houston. And, uh, and my parents would take it. I mean, it was literally daisies in your hair, big ass people tripping their fucking brains out, just wandering around acting goofy. And my parents used to take us down there to look at them like they were zoo animals. And uh, I was like, well, it looks like they're having fun. <laughs> it was like and, a learning uh, moment, like don't end up like these people? Or? Yeah, so, you know, I had a, a, uh, <laughs> a just an odd childhood, you know, that uh, for one year I've been chasing lizards in this little bitty dirt town. That's, uh, and then, uh, then I live in Houston in a, you know, in a, in a time where, you know, the America is probably it's one of its most interesting periods politically and socially, and, and it's pretty goddamn cool. And uh, But I always had, a, I always leaned towards uh, uh, drugs, pretty heavy, you know, amounts of drugs. That's why we talk to each other. And that doesn't work in, in uh, the Navy? My handle on the CB was Captain Cannabinol. <laughs> and, uh, where were you stationed in the Navy? I was uh, stationed at uh, uh, Pearl Harbor, <laughs> and uh, so we went on a Western Pacific uh, cruise, and then I got I got busted. Uh, they had a drug test on our boat, and I, you know, eight of us out of only seventy six people on this boat, and eight of us got busted for heroin, and uh, they really took it seriously and you know what the thing is it was either heroin or huff paint because i just like getting fucked up and uh and the heroin that we were snorting it it was like a match head of it would get eight That's people it. so yeah. fucked up they fucked couldn't up. fucking see and i liked it i was like i was like i was like clapton i liked it too i, <laughs> I liked, liked it too and uh so but I, but i never was a big junkie you know i got busted there and then i got sent to the naval drug rehabilitation center in miramar california and uh and there i got discharged from the navy and the uh the the commander of the base uh, at miramar and while i was being discharged uh, called me a, a hole in our national line of defense i'm like me i'm 19 how you, what were you counting on me for, for fuck's sake? A hole? That's an insult. But <clears throat> and where, where where did you grow up? What what city? Houston, you said. Yeah, yeah. So you went little... from Houston to nineteen in Hawaii. It's amazing. Yeah. You only did a little bit. Of, like that seems like heaven. Well, we did. You know what we started doing? Uh, I started doing acid in uh, in A school, and uh, then it's probably seventy five. Uh, and the first time I did it, I was in A school in San Diego, and uh, this guy was selling this window pane acid that I had no idea what I had in my hand, and I, I they were just buying in the barracks down below me, and uh, but I did have a 
tendency to like pills and stuff. So I was like, yeah, fuck, I'll try it. And I, but I didn't have any friends. I mean, I just got there and, uh, so I took two hits of uh, this four wave. So oh. this is eight hits of this sick ass uh, window pane acid, and I loved it. I mean, I, just I was loved, fucked up. Uh, I did one hit in '78. I was in the eighth I, grade, and I was fucked up, Ron White. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. I, I had a dad had this trip, so it was so part of it was really awkward because I was at this hotel that I rented, and I'm laying on this uh, couch tripping my brains out. I don't even know what's happening you know but all I know it's, it's pleasant for the most part and I don't have to do anything except enjoy it because I'm in a hotel room and uh, with a couple other people and uh, and so I started getting this uh, this vision of me inflating and uh, and I would take my shoes off and I would deflate a little bit <laughs> and then I'd get too thin and I'd put my shoes back on and I'd start to inflate a little bit more so for hours I just every 15 minutes I gotta take my shoes off or put them back on to keep me from getting too thin or too fat it was pretty strong acid is what I'm trying to say <laughs> at least it made sense at the time but yeah it was manageable <laughs> I, it was manageable it was a manageable I even got the sugar cubes and the liquid acid old school style we did it one time we did it more than once what did we do it oh, we do it two nights in a row that's right we just did it light, though. It wasn't really deep, deep, deep seeing fucking leprechauns and stuff like this. Now, so you're in Mexico, and you're still traveling from time to time, but nobody's got your fucking phone number. Yeah. So finally, I go to Miami, and I meet this character named Joe Chadwick, and I went in there as a feature, and I worked the first week, and they really liked me. Then the second week, the, somebody dropped out, and they kept me. The first time I was there, I went for three weeks straight. But the three weeks I was there, they took about two people, you and a white guy from Cleveland that's still in the game. Something happened. I think he works locally in Cleveland, whatever. Never knew who this was. I go back there again. New Year's, I do all these gigs, and they're talking to me about this character named Ron White. And finally, I go back to L.A., and one day my phone starts ringing. Do I know how to get a hold of Ron White? And I'm laughing my ass off. I'm like giggling. And I never think anything of it. I never see this character run white. And I go to the fucking Laugh Factory in Houston, which at the time had to be one of the best clubs in the country. The yeah. place where I always had the best time in my life was that city. And I go there, and I think it's John Wesling and me, and we go out to smoke a joint, and there you are. Kathleen's headlining, you're featuring... And you're outside holding court, man, just talking about ba 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 and I'm watching you. And then I sat there and watched you before Kathleen, and I was just fucking blown the fuck away. That fucking landing in uh, where I OD'd. Where did I OD? Beaumont International Airport and tire serve. I fucking, I almost, I almost fucking passed out. Beaumont was where I almost OD'd fucking, who OD's? In Beaumont, nobody's. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.